Hello everybody, I'm just here and welcome to Mysterious Disappearances or Kaito Otome to Kami Kakushi. Um, this is a new show that I know basically nothing about hair. <laughs> that I know basically nothing about. I only know that I like the design of the main character, seemingly. Uh, she has uh, those tiny little Hime eyebrows, and uh, I always have a weak spot for characters with Hime eyebrows. Uh, it's also a mystery show, so, you know, something for me to theorize about. And uh, the premise on uh, Annalist, I believe, explicitly mentioned that uh, the main girl is... What, what, what word did they use there? I can't remember, but basically it was a very explicit mention of the fact that she has big boobs. And I don't think they used the word busty, they used something less uh, less pedestrian, so to speak. I don't know why, I don't know what word was it. Uh, you might want to check out the like uh, stream, I streamed my look at the anime of the season, it's gonna be somewhere in the card, in the corner. Uh, so... That kind of intrigued me, because it was like, oh, that's the main selling point of a mystery show? What? No, probably not. Probably not. Uh, the story is that, I believe, uh, the girl works at a bookstore or something, but she's an aspiring novelist, and uh, she wants to, like, follow uh, urban legends and people's disappearances, to get ideas for her book, something like that, and uh, and there is a dude who who joins her, and uh, and yeah, and that's ba that's basically all I know about it. <laughs> that's basically all I know. Uh, the trailer had to have been good, I guess, if I'm watching it. I don't know, we, we went through so many anime during that stream that I can't quite recall why I picked every single, you know, every uh, every and each one of them, but I had to have picked this one for a reason, right? Uh, besides that, I have absolutely no clue what it's gonna be about, besides, again, mystery, disappearances, urban legends, stuff like that. Uh, so, this, uh, this is going to be as blind as uh, reactions go, I'd say. And, uh, yeah, I guess we should just start, right? Uh, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't seen any of my videos, uh, the usual format is that first I talk a little bit about the previous episode, or in the case of the first episode, I talk about uh, what I know about the series, then we will watch the episode with a timer and subs so that YouTube doesn't strike it, then we're gonna watch it again in a corner here, uh, where I'm gonna go frame by frame for some animation, or maybe I'm gonna stop for a moment and talk for extended period of time about something, stuff like that. Also, we're gonna see the staff and the voice actors responsible for it, also in this window. And uh, lastly, I'm gonna give my closing thoughts about the show. Uh, so, the first episode is going to be a little bit longer than the rest, probably like an hour and a half tops, I'd say. Uh, the rest should be shorter, although that's not a given, depending how much I have to talk about, of course. Uh, but yeah, right now I guess we should just start watching the first episode and see what it's all about. And uh, to do that, you will need your subs. You... God damn it! you will need your subs, of course, to follow along with me. I'm gonna need my sound to hear what's going on in the show. And I'm gonna have to ask you for support, support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon or YouTube down below, or not. Share my content, spread the word, it costs you absolutely nothing and helps the channel a lot. And now, with all of that out of the way, that uh, we can start watching episode 1 of Mysterious Disappearances in 3, 2, 1, go! Ooh, spooky music. A very rundown place. What is this place? Is she like squatting in an abandoned building? Is it an orphanage or something? 
I see the school tracksuit. Where are we? Overgrown metro station. Oh, uh, is it the story in uh, one of the books? Probably. And here's our main girl. Ooh, I like the logo. I like the shade of yellow. Please tell me the uh, main and proper episodes have as... I was about to say as much style. <laughs> I mean, yeah, those like dark shadows and stuff. Yeah, hopefully. Are they going to be leaning heavily into fan service here? Is it an edgy show? Or is it just opening bait? They weren't kidding about her being busty, though. <laughs> Gotta give them that. Yeah, that's the metro station. Kemonomimi! Alright. Some sort of a... Uh, whatchamacallit? Uh, fuck, I forgot the name for it. Cursed Book Maiden and the Birthday. Oh, I, I know this voice. Not the voice I expected him to have. I know her voice as well. <laughs> Not a bad prospect, is it? Okay, so she is interested in urban legends. He isn't. <laughs> I mean, that's one way to put it. And you said it so yourself. Hmm. Selective mutism or something? Hmm. It's probably a mysterious book that contains a bunch of information about my camera having frozen. There we go. Uh, 
probably a mysterious book that contains about of infor a bunch of information about urban legends, and they will go investigate them. That's what I wanted to say. How long was my camera frozen for? Hope it wasn't too long. Okay, so is he a fan of her works, actually? Also, how old are they? Parting? What do you mean, parting? Is he going to disappear and she's gonna be looking for him? The other way around? Of course. We gotta have some fun service, right? <laughs> I guess I have my answer as to whether there's gonna be fun service in this show or not. Of course there's gonna be. Near midnight. And ah, one more minute until the witching hour. No, the witching hour is like three in the morning, I think. Yeah, I think so. Writer's block. Or... Ah, a gifted child, then. I understand. I understand so much. Is this going to reawaken her inspiration? Or is it going to pull her into the world of I don't know, monsters? Some uh, ancient Japanese, probably? I mean, that's universal. People in China drank mercury in hopes of keeping eternal youth, so... People are gonna do all sorts of things to achieve that. Snake oil or not snake oil? <clears throat> and he's alone at night. Okay, so I assume they are roughly the same age, maybe? He's just very short? Or she's very tall? Huh? Age regression? What? Huh? Out of all the things I expected, this wasn't one of them? And the music does a great job. What? No, arms too short, right? Not calibrated properly. What? Is it the book? Is it the book? Like, you read a story about people achieving eternal youth and you turn younger. Something like that? Okay, covering for her. A nice friend. 
<laughs> Not so nice of a friend. What's wrong with his eyes? Is it just style or is it something actually different about him? Oh, uh, memory regression as well? Is this how people disappear mysteriously? They turn back in time? And she's not here. Did she regress to a toddler or something? Huh? Huh? What's going on? You can smell the magic or something? And she's going to grow back because he lifted the curse or something. What? What? Did she get brain hemorrhage? What the flying fuck is going on? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so she she got like forcibly shrunk, compressed, you could say. the first uh, urban legend. I mean, yeah, fair. Hmm.
What is my Yoshi? Checks out, yeah. Checks out, yeah. Full moon, no less. Checks out. Probably checks out as well. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat it for the third time if need be. <laughs> Score. <laughs> it was just left to any unsuspecting person. Okay, can we undo this curse, maybe? Okay, sure. Hanka and Choka. All right. Those are words. And there we go. Immediate growth. At least she's not going to be bleeding her organs out through her eye holes. I mean, you have no pants and no bra, so... <laughs> of course. I already like him. I've no clue what's his deal, but... Huh? Of course she bolted with the book. Oh! Okay, smart! <laughs> she is good at utilizing the book and very good at dying as well because she overutilized it. Read the fucking choka and stop fooling around. What? And you're not gonna be able to write if you're dead, so let's try to ensure that you're not dead, first and foremost, maybe.
Yeah. It's not that she, I don't know, lost her childhood wonder or whatever. She just suppressed it as an adult. Or the word of adults suppressed it in her, I guess you could say. That's at least my interpretation of it. Hmm. This warning sign again. Ticket to... Oh, is that the uh, rundown uh, metro station that we've seen at the beginning? All right. All right. It's not what I expected in the absolute best way possible. It exceeded all of my expectations. Fucking tenfold. And some amazing music. With sand-painted ending. I wonder if it's actually fully sand painted or is it uh made with like photoshop and shit this is like properly sand painted oh i'm gonna enjoy this show oh i'm gonna enjoy this show uh, if you're unfamiliar, this is my green notebook of, of theories. And uh, whenever I have a theory about a given show, I note it down here. And when the show ends, we go through it again. And uh, we try to figure out... Well, we try to see on how many accounts was I correct and on how many accounts I was wrong. Hmm. Another victim of some sort of a magical instrument, I would assume. Oh boy. Mysterious. This. Uh, appearances. Oh boy. Holy shit. Uh, let's let's watch this episode again. We must. We must. It's probably not going to add anything <laughs> to, what I, to what I've been saying. I don't think I'm going to be able to understand it much more, but good shit. Who is she? We don't know, but she has special eyes. That much we can see, and this is our, uh, our dude, our main character. He probably has a sister, it seems. And they live in some rundown place in uh, the... Uh, uh, some probably like a, I know, staff room at the entrance to a metro station. And those warning signs again. Those warning signs again. Yeah, there is something special about him. He has some sort of contact with, I don't know, the underworld or whatever. Ah. Uh... Such a good show. And his sister is apparently special as well, because she has special eyes. And we're gonna meet so many more characters, it seems. The metro station again. Uh, Maho Shoujo, some Kemono Mimi yokai in a tracksuit. Alright. Cursed Book, Maiden and Birthday. Yeah, checks out. I initially thought, uh, as especially at the beginning, as we were watching them just hanging around at the store, uh, a little bit of friendly banter, oh, stores are 
bookstores are closing down, nobody buys books anymore, yada, yada, yada. I fully expected this show to be, basically, uh, we are staying, we are working at the bookstore. Uh, she is a novelist. She doesn't get ideas for novels. Uh, they get the mysterious book from from this dude and uh, the book has urban legends and that inspires her to uh, look into those urban legends and it basically becomes scooby-doo right he's the reluctant sidekick that nevertheless is willing to tag along because of course because he wants to spend some time with ogawa-sen and besides that it's fun and they read about the infinite staircase of infinity so they go there and they walk up and oh 200 steps they walk down shit 130 steps it really is longer upwards right and slowly 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 we start introducing perhaps uh i don't know bigger more dangerous mysteries like the uh, classroom that you can never leave and they go there and they have trouble leaving and right i fully expected something like that to happen basically like early episodes of magia record that's what i was expecting fully and entirely that's all i was expecting from this show and of course some fan service here and there right maybe a mysterious ooze that dissolves your clothes oh no it really dissolved my clothes yeah don't don't look at me right i like fully expected maybe something like that out of this show i got so much more than i bargained for so much more and i wouldn't have it any other way uh yeah she's writing a new novel but she's not having much luck uh, i would assume that the events of from now until whatever uh, are going to reawaken some of that uh, mm, some of that passion of hers right she could write about the events of this week it took a week right she could write about that and it would make for a really good i don't know light novel that could maybe later be adapted into a manga and later into an anime right maybe 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 it would work even on like a meta perspective to have this show or this manga, this light novel, whatever the source material is, be her retelling of what she's been through. Right? It would be nice. It would be cool. Uh, my friend who's never at a loss for something to say, Adashino Ren. But a humble... Yeah, what follows is but a humble account of our friendship and parting. So it is a story that she wrote on like a meta, uh, meta level. Yeah, she goes back. We see some uh, some uh, really nice fan service. There is gonna be a lot, a lot of art of her, isn't there? There is gonna be a metric fuck ton of art. I guarantee. <laughs> um, yeah, she's been a prominent author or prodigy author as a child, but then she just became uh, kind of kind of normal, right? Kind of normal, nothing. Uh, particularly she she she's just she's just a normal adult right i can relate uh, as a kid i was taking part in a pretty much every single um how do you how would you translate it to english uh contest where you have to recite a poem from memory and recite it in like you know this proper way invoking all sorts of emotions in the listener and yada 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 right and i was always getting like first place first place first place maybe if it got to like a national level oh yeah I, i'm not quite good enough for a national level but whatever the local levels i was i was there at the top but nowadays <laughs> who the fuck cares that i can recite a poem good right nobody it doesn't matter uh, especially since plenty of other people my age maybe they weren't good at reciting poems when they were young but maybe they are just as good as re at reciting poems like i am now 
And besides that, reciting poems doesn't fucking matter, does it? There is no like you you can't be a famous poem reciter the way you can you can be a famous actor or a famous musician or whatever, right? Uh, now her thing is a little bit different because you can still be a prominent author, but she probably wrote really good for a child, but not really good for an adult. Uh, that's another thing. Early on, you are um, kind of sort of locked to that like local area as, as a child, mostly, right? You might be the best author um, at school, right? Or you might be the best author uh, in the age range of 10 to 12, or the best author in class, or the best author in the prefecture, or whatever, right? As a child. But when you're an adult, you have to compete with other adults and the scope uh, broadens, right? I, for example, could not be... Uh, even if I were the best author in the age range of 27 to 33 or whatever, that doesn't matter. There are no age ranges like that, right? I could, I could write the absolute best book that anybody at the age of 29 has ever wrote but it doesn't matter because someone who's 32 wrote a better book and nobody cares about the age brackets so that's also something she uh, she kind of has to go through she's no longer competing with just children in her age range she's not just competing with um, newbie novelists she's just competing with fellow adults for publication. Yeah, when I was 15, I received a newcomer's award, but past the age of 20, someone like that is just an ordinary person. Exactly. Exactly. Doesn't have to be an ordinary person, right? You can uh, still train your writing and write really good, and you can publish your writing maybe on the internet and make some money on Patreon, for example, right? Uh, but... Uh, yeah, there is probably many more people like you. Many more now than they were when you were 15 or however however old. Japanese, but slightly different. Poems. Poems, poems, poems. In the heavens, the sun and moon shine. You are like them in my thoughts. And I regret that with each new day, you grow older. Is it like uh, just... Leonardo DiCaprio's poem, right? <laughs> I regret that you grew past 25. You, I want nothing to do with you anymore. I need myself a new girlfriend that's younger than that. <laughs> From the Man Yoshi. What the hell is Man Yoshi? Let's Google that right quick. Man Yoshi. Man Yoshi. Oldest extant collection of Japanese um, waka poetry in classical Japanese compiled sometime after AD 759 during the Nara period. The anthology is uh, one of the most revered of Japan's poetic compilations. The compiler, or the last in, a, last in a series of compilers, is today widely believed to be Otomo no Yakamochi, although uh, numerous other theories have been proposed. Uh, the Manyoshu comprises more than uh, 4,500 waka poems in 20 volumes and is broadly divided into three genres. Zoka, songs at banquets and trips. Somonka, songs about love between men and women. And Banka, songs to mourn the dead, the death of people. The songs uh, were written by people in vari of various state statuses, such as the, emp the emperor, aristocrats, junior officials, sakimori soldiers... Uh, street performance peasants and togoku folk songs. There are more than 2100 waka poems by unknown authors. A uh, collection is divided into 20 parts of books, uh, 265 ch choka, long poems, 2400 tanka, short poems, and one anarenga, short connecting poems. Uh... For Kanshi Chinese poems and 22 Chinese prose pages. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of poems. 
Uh, interesting that he says later that the Chaka and uh, the others are Choka, uh, are different than what Wikipedia claims them to be. Uh -huh. People from way back then wanted to be young again too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And she suddenly age regresses. I love this detail of her trying to grab a bottle, but she still, her brain still thinks her arms are longer. She's miscalibrated. Good shit. I like this attention to detail. I really do. And uh, I really like the main character here. Or, well, this dude, one of our two main characters, basically. There's something about him. He's either not fully human, or he's a spirit, or a spiritual guide, or something like that. Uh, the crazy eyes are a dead giveaway, and his knowledge of things occult are another dead giveaway. <clears throat> yeah, could totally start with a mysterious text. And she got the... Uh, urge to write again, she got inspiration again, and she believes it's because she got young again. I don't think that's the cause of it. I think the cause of it is that she went through some sort of a supernatural uh, event that inspired her, right? She's basically writing down what happened. Maybe a little bit more flowery, right? Maybe a little bit exaggerated, but that's what she's doing. It's not that her being turned back into a child, somehow magically altered her brain chemistry into being more creative. No. No, that's not what happens. Absolutely not. She just got inspired. She just got inspired because something special happened. Something that isn't just the daily grind happened. And uh, let's be honest. When we were children, that's where inspiration came from, right? Because so many things around us were wondrous, were new, were unique, right? You were, I don't know, uh, for the first time, you stayed out at night. Oh, that was an event that inspired you so much. You were maybe looking around for some ghosts, or maybe looking at a satellite passing above you, and you thought it was a UFO, right? But then you learn that, no, that's actually just the ISS, it's not UFO, and the wonder kind of went away. And then you started staying up at the night on the daily, and the night is suddenly not so wondrous anymore. Right? That's the issue here. We lose the childhood wonder because things stop being wondrous, and we also just kind of stop looking for wondrous things. I believe. And we maybe even lose opportunity to experience wondrous things. Uh, I, remem I remember when I was a kid, uh, we would always go on school trips. We would go to visit a, um, uh, a closed down, um, uh, what you might call it, silver mine, right? And we would go down there in a, in a rickety lift and it was like, you know, stone and stalagmites and stalactites and oh shit, that was so cool. Then we were uh, allowed to like pan for gold. Of course, there was no gold in the sand, but holy shit, we can pan for gold, right? And I was able to buy myself like a little slice of mika and it was so wondrous. Uh, we would go to uh, a skansen, it's called in Polish, I don't know how to translate it. Uh, basically, basically a place that keeps intact the like old buildings and all the uh, tools and stuff like that and uh, has a bunch of animals and holy shit that's so cool I, I i saw an alpaca what the fuck even is an alpaca right it was so wondrous and nowadays if you're an adult and you're watching this right now when was the last time you went something somewhere interesting when was the last time you went somewhere that isn't i know a store, or a bus stop, or work. When was the last time you visited a mine? When was the last time you went to visit a bunker with a guide? 
When was the last time you went uh, abroad? I can't remember. When was the last time I did something wondrous? So the wonder just kind of diminishes over time because we stop experiencing those things. And I fully believe this is Ogawa's issue here as well. For the past however many years she's been working at the bookstore, she would wake up, eat some breakfast, go to work, finish work, go to the konbini, buy herself a konbini lunch, go back home, watch some stupid shit on YouTube, maybe try writing some without success and go to sleep. There's no wonder to be found in a life like this, is there? Uh, that was a long aside. <laughs> Mm-hmm. She's not the most security-minded. Something smells good. I... I think this is like a purposeful misdirection. He says, something smells good, and the camera pans to her bra. And my first thought, oh, of course. She, she's a... He's a horny little bastard. He smells her sweaty bra and says, oh, shit, it smells good. And he will probably take that bra and just take a good and nice whiff of it. Right? That was my first thought. But no, it's not that. He smells the book. He smells the magic fucking book. Grown younger, old book from where friend used bookstore secondhand book market. No signs of a struggle. Where could she be? And here's the warning sign. It's going to be a recurring thing, isn't it? Did it actually appear in her apartment? Or is it a symbol or is it symbolism? Like a symbol of him getting an idea that oh shit, something occult is going on. And the road sign symbolizes something occult going on. The cat with special eyes again. Is it him? Is it his familiar? I don't know. Something unrelated. Maybe. And yeah. The smell he uh, he smelled was the smell of this book. This is the cause. Open eyes, shit's going serious. When a character who has their eyes closed opens their eyes, you know that shit's getting serious. Now I can write another novel. Yeah, because a wondrous thing happened to you. Like, brain hemorrhage. Yeah, and she didn't even notice that. I mean, she noticed her, like, memories missing. Warning sign again. Levitating in the air, or am I seeing it wrong? Damn, he's scary. And she's a cutie fang, or a flesh fang, however you want to call it. And yeah, it hurts. This is interesting. She didn't actually grow again. Her body has just been compressed into a child body. All of the blood, muscle, bone, everything that's left there just got compressed. And uh, her brain is... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her brain is too large for her skull, basically. Uh, I was about to say that brains actually don't grow with age, but yeah, they do. It's eyes that don't grow with age. Uh, the, the same size of eyes that we are born with, uh, they never grow. Piece of trivia, the more you know. Uh, yeah, all of that is still within your body. And he's not surprised because he knows what's up. It's a cursed book that has uh, Choka and Hanka and uh, all sorts of Banka and stuff like that. Banka can revive the dead. Somon can... Uh, Banka revive, Somon manipulate. And uh, what did Wikipedia say? Uh-huh. Banka, songs to mourn the dead. Soka, or Somonka here, songs about love between men and women. So yeah, manipulate hearts. Right? Somon. Somon and uh, Zoka. And yeah, Zoka, songs at banquets and trips, so bring back your youth. Interesting. Zoka, author unknown. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, a number of conditions. Midnight, moon, 28 years old, and an untouched virgin maiden. I love that he's like, yes, she's a virgin. <laughs> because that's the most important thing right now, isn't it? I mean, to him, it's probably like a, maybe not a daily occurrence, but he's probably used to stuff like that, events like that, and he knows what to do, so he's not gonna, you know, panic about it. But it's still funny to see him just celebrate that, yes, she's a virgin. Uh, and yeah, she wasn't specially chosen. It was just, you know, a random chance, basically. Uh, what you'll read now is the complete choka that it's summarized. Okay, so the... The zoka summarizes the choka. Or the, the tanka. Tanka are short poems, right? And choka are long poems. So do the tanka summarize the choka? I know, man. Maybe. Something like that. Doesn't matter. I wish that the bridge to the heavens were longer. I wish that the highest mountains were taller. I wish that Tsukuyomi's water of youth were something I could steal and give to you to make you young again. And it has the opposite effect of making her older again. And he just watches with interest and uh, notices first and foremost that, yeah, she's wearing panties. <laughs> Decency? Was that something I had? I mean, you tell me, man. And yeah, she fully believes that she needs the, the book to write. Uh, very nice chase scene. I like that she learned how to use her newfound magic powers. Uh, I kind of, at this moment, at this point, I kind of expected uh, this to be like the plot point. That she actually learns to utilize this book. To utilize the spells contained within, basically. So that when they go and look for another, uh, I don't know, another urban legend or something, and, oh, there's a crawl space, but I'm too big to go in. Well, she recites the poem, she becomes short again, and she goes in, and then she re recites the choka, and she grows taller again. Problem solved. Uh, they need to talk with a ghost. Well, there, there's the... Zoka or Zaku or whatever the fuck it's called, we can recite that and briefly talk to the spirit or, right? Stuff like that. Maybe. Uh, but no. No, it seems to be a one-off this book and it seems to put quite a bit of strain on her body, doesn't it? Meanwhile, he is also somehow supernatural because he's able to basically teleport. If I'm not young, no one will read my books. Yeah, she basically took the wrong lesson out of it. She believes that her books were read only because they were by a by, they were written by a 15-year-old. So that the only way her books can be read again is if they are written again by a 15-year-old. She didn't quite think it through because I assume her like ID or whatever states her actual birthday. So even if she tries to publish it, she's going to publish it under her real name. She's not going to have much of a choice. So it's going to be published as a 20-year-old, 28-year-old anyway. Her body state doesn't really matter for publishing, does it? Uh, I have no talent. Talent that gilding has long since worn away. Right, that was also something that uh, plenty of us had... That, that gilding as a child, right? Oh, you're so talented. You have so much talent, but sometimes it was maybe because we were the only ones willing to engage in something like that. Right? That's uh, another thought I had. Maybe I was so special at uh, primary school, being always the like leading role at every single school play and shit like that. Maybe it was because nobody who would be better than myself agreed to participate in it entirely plausible. Maybe there were 50 other kids who would also do really well in the lead role, but I was the only one who volunteered. Mm, all that's left is an immature person who can't socialize with others, but even so, I still want to write novels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still want to write. Then write! Then write. And yeah, you're fine with running around town half-naked, after all. That childhood wonder is 
still within you. All of that imagination, all of that shit is still within you. Because something supernatural happened to you, it kind of freed you from the shackles of normality, of normalcy, right? But you can choose to free yourself from those shackles as well. You don't need external stimuli for that. Let me read a new work of yours. And yeah, she has at least one fan. Uh, and uh, here we see this. If you'd like to report a found article, Jusho. This can be exchanged for one ticket to Yami Station. I want this time, thank you. And he takes the book away, he keeps the book for some reason. We await the opportunity to serve you again, says the bloody news. Mysterious disappearances. Way to drop the title, eh? Schoolhouse drool and an apartment wife. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Again, this this episode, this show was so much more than I bargained for. And uh, and I love it. And I love it. <sighs> Let's see who made it, shall we? Let's see all the people responsible for this masterpiece. And uh, we can see all the other people. And I see that she still has that book, so they will probably keep using it. Even in the manga... Uh, she also has the the book as well. Can you see my cur my mouse cursor? Yes, you can. Yeah, she also has the book. Uh, Twelve episodes based on a mango. Studio Zero G. Mm, Edgy, no doubt. Mystery, romance, supernatural. Uh, urban fantasy, sane and female protagonist, ghost. Male protagonist, nudity, demons, writing. Uh, similar shows, Yofkash no Uta. Season 2, by the way. Season 2 of Yopkash Nota is happening. Uh, Occultic 9, of course. Dark Gathering. Bakemonogatari. Uh, that gives me hope. The Bakemonogatari and Yopkash Nota give me hope that there's going to be some plenty, like, highly stylized shots, and I'm all down for it. And Mirko Chan. Uh, kind of obvious as well. Uh, let's see. Studio Zero G. What have they made, I wonder? Mm, some isekais. It seems. Mm, anybody, any, anything that I would recognize particularly. Uh, Grand Blue, Tsugumomo, they made. And not much more that I would know. Uh, some Idol Master OVA, Tsugumomo OVA. <clears throat> yeah, I pretty much only recognize Tsugumomo here. Interesting. Interesting, and the uh, that's not chained soldier, it's something else, is it? And treasure hunters, oh, it's uh, not yet released. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Something that's gonna appear in maybe like I don't know, autumn or winter season or whatever. Okay, uh, and uh, they're making the uh, Nihon Eyokozo Elfsan. Uh, which I'm gonna be watching, maybe, because it's good. It's uh, I really like it, the manga at least. Okay, so that's the studio. Uh, let's take a look at the staff in particular. Yeah, I really wanna see who made the uh, ending and opening, for sure. Uh, but let's start with the original creator and the director. First and foremost, original creator is Nujima, who also <coughs> made the uh, Dos Frontline Anthology. Interesting. And uh, some other manga that I think I heard of this one. Yeah, I read it. I read it briefly. Interesting. It's about a girl, as I mean, as you can see, uh, a girl who's really, really strong and she has to survive in a school full of delinquents. Basically, G good. It's a good mango. Can recommend. And the director is Tomomi Mochizuki, uh, director and series composition as well. Uh, also, those frontline storyboard of a single episode, Vanita no Karate. <coughs> uh, 
uh, Code Geass, the uh, I believe recent uh, season, maybe. Uh, Noragami storyboard for a couple of episodes. Uh, mostly storyboarding work, far as I can tell. Uh, Deadman Wonderland, Idol Master. Um, going way back to Scrapped Princess, even. Astro Boy and all the very, very like older shows. Yeah, oh, that goes like way far back, way to original Odyssey Yatsura and Doraemon, the 79 Doraemon storyboard. Dude has a lot of experience, doesn't he? Storyboarding, mostly storyboarding. Is this his first job as a director, though? Uh, just uh, briefly work... No, battery director as well. Mostly storyboarding, though. Interesting. Interesting. Director of Ranma Half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. All right. All right. All right. Uh, character design, absolutely. Uh, prop and color design as well. Sure, why not? Uh, character design is uh, Takuya Tani, who also did character design for uh, Muvluva, for Azure Lane. Uh, no, animation direction for Azure Lane. Uh, Kiniro Mosaic direction, Persona, Persona, One Piece key animation on a single episode. Nisemon Gatari also key animation on a single episode. Uh, Hiyori Den Forward Akishino. That's an interesting surname. Uh, prop design for this show as well for as well as for Buddy Daddy's um, charm design for Assault Lily, whatever charm design means, and uh, Death Parade prop design, Sabagebu prop design, watch Sabagebu, uh, Furikuri alternative prop design as well, and Miyoki Ichinose color design for uh, this show as well as for Bookworm Isekai. Uh, Lodos, finishing for Lodos, and uh, not that much more. Hmm. All right. Uh, then we have editing, director of photography. Sure, let's check them out. Why not? And art director. Sure. Uh, Masaki Utsunomiya, editing on uh, Mysterious Disappearances, editing on this new chain anime that's going to be coming out wherever. Whenever. Uh, episode direction on uh, Kaguya Sama, Isekai Nonbiri, Grand Blue, mm. and some older shows, including Midori no Hibi, Offline Editing, Planet Ace, uh, Code Geass, Tomomi Saito, Director of Photography. Oh, uh, worked on uh, Darker Than Black as well, photography of a couple of episodes. Mm, High Q Idol Master and uh, Toshiki Sakai, art director, also also worked on nothing I would recognize. Birdie Wing art design and Trigun set design, and uh, Azure Lane OVA art design. Those are about the only ones that I recognize here. And uh, the rest is mostly music. Music and sound. Uh, sound director and sound effect. Let's start with that. Um, sound director is Fumiyuki Go, who also was a sound director on uh, this new Yuri show. Also, Kaiju number eight. Is it out already, by the way? It's... No, not yet. Um, Ragna Crimson, sound design. The uh, vending machine is Sekai. Uh, play, 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 Addis, Overlord 4, uh, Kono Hiller Mendoxai, Non Non Biori, producer. Interesting, producer and sound director. Taktop Destiny sound director, would you look at that? A uh, huge shame that Taktop Symphony, the gacha, shut down like yesterday. Uh, Decadence sound director, No Guns Live, both seasons. Uh, that's a big portfolio. Overlord, first season, of course, Pleple Play Addis. Log Horizon, second season, Rail Wars, Non Non Biori. Plenty of uh, positions in his portfolio. 
and uh, Noriko Izumo. She's a freelancer, sound effects on this show, as well as Spy Family, Mahotsukai no Yome, Soso no Freeren. Would you look at that? More Mahotsukai no Yome, um, quintessential quintuplets can call uh, Parik Komei. Mm, those Frontline, Somali, Totsukuni no Shoujo, Boogie Pop, Mahotsukai no Yome. That is a lot of shows that she was responsible for. And uh, lastly, but not, definitely not least, no, not, not yet, lastly, let's check out the music in general because I really loved the little uh, tunes that played when uh, things were going mysterious. Yukio Kondo. Uh, also did music for Pupa and uh, John, Junjo Romantica and uh, Kayo Konishi. Also did music for Pupa and uh, Psycho Driver must say Rakuryu, whatever that might have been. Uh, opening. Yes, first and foremost. Um, opening by Mafu Mafu. Uh, Mafu Mafu, who also did openings for and music for plenty of shows. Uh, opening for Tact of Destiny. Mm, what else? Open opening for Pokemon, curiously, and uh, none opening for gamers, and uh, none of the rest do I recognize. I'm afraid. And uh, then the ending, Neru. Mm, Neru did the lyrics and arrangement. and uh, Neru also did uh, music for Young Blackjack, also ending and others that I don't recognize, and uh, the ending performance and opening performance. Opening performance by Yu Yu, whose only role is in Mysterious Disappearances, and uh, Nonaka Obuchi, whose only role is in the ending of Kaito Otome. Interesting. Interesting. Let's check out the seiyu. <coughs> And yeah, I knew that it's someone I know, and lo and behold, uh, Fido's eye. Uh, yeah, let's check out the main characters first. Fido's, Fido's eye, uh, who's uh, voicing Ogawa, also voices plenty of other characters. Mm, Delta in Overlord. Uh, who else do we have here? Anarchy from Mahu Shoujo, uh, Magical Destroyers, Railza from Saito San, Power from Chainsaw Man. Uh, who else do we have here? Mm, Hibiki Sakura from Danberu, of course. And uh, quite a few other roles as well that I don't necessarily recognize, I'm afraid. Mm, and I feel like I should have, because I it's not the first, or the second, or the third time I see her voice a character. But maybe some of those characters just kind of, I know, elude me. Hmm, alright. And then we have Daiki Yamashita voicing Ren. He's also voicing Midoriya Izuku from uh, Boku no Hiro Academia, of course. A uh, fairly recognizable role. Uh, then we also have Naoto from Ijirana, Ijiranaide Nagatoro-san. And we have Go uh, from Pokemon. Mm, Shu from Horimiya. Zeke from Shingeki no Kyojin. Uh, someone from No Guns Life. Mm, who else? Yushiro from Kimetsu no Yaiba. <clears throat> yeah, plenty of other roles, mostly, of course, uh, Izuku um, from, uh, uh, from uh, Boku no Academia. And uh, then the secondary characters, Oto Adashino, voiced by Eri Yukimura, and Manami Uname, voiced by Yui Horie. Eri Yukimura also voiced... 
Let's see if I recognize anybody here. Uh, Tsushima from uh, Index. And that's the only character that I recognize here. <laughs> Not that many. Or maybe I simply haven't watched enough anime. And Yui Hori, uh, the voice of uh, Manami, also voice of Felix in ReZero. Uh, also the voice of Mary from Sai Hat on the Paladin. Would you look at that? Uh, also, uh, also, also Saren from Precon. Mm, who else do we have here? Someone in Shaman King. Uh, yeah, Saren from Precon. Sutur from Arknights, interestingly. Uh, Manami from Boku no Hori Academia. Pipimi, but who hasn't voiced Pipimi? Uh, someone in Terraformers. And uh, plenty, plenty, plenty other shows. Tsubasa Hanekawa in Monogatari. Uh, Kosuri in Shimoneta. Yeah, there is... Uh, there's a lot of roles here. I could just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Roles going like way back when. Uh, I thought I saw a familiar face. Maybe not. Yeah, as I said, plenty of roles. Plenty of roles. Uh, next we have John Doe. Well, that's an imaginative name. It was voiced by Yuya Uchida and Shizuku. Voiced by Rie Takahashi. Yuya Uchida also voiced uh, Orden from Soson of Riren. Uh as well as Henriksen from Nanatsu no Taizai. Mm, someone from Precure, I see. Frankenstein from Soul Eater. Arata from Tokyo Ghoul. And not many other people that I recognize. And uh, Rie Takahashi voiced uh, Hoshizaki-san from Sasaki Topichan. Also Emilia from ReZero. Ai Hoshino from Oshinoko. Uh, Anna Saito from Yuru Camp, uh, Megumin from Konosuba, uh, plenty of uh, Ririha from Oyuki Yumi no Kaita, plenty of roles I actually recognize this time around. Montpellier from uh, Azure Lane, Tomochan from Tomochan, and uh, a lot of other characters in a lot of other shows as well. Uh, then we have Nodoka Ametsuchi, voiced by Saya Aizawa, and Yoru Mun Himeo, voiced by Naomi Ozora. Saya Aizawa voiced... Uh, voiced, voiced, voiced. Anybody I would know? Uh, Kasuguya from Strike the Blood. Uh, Kozakura. Yeah, Kozakura from Rifle is Beautiful. And not much more, Hiromi from Cinderella Girls. And Naomi Ozora, uh, voiced of uh, Futari Shizuka from Sasaki Topichan. Also the voice of Haru from Girls und Panza. Uh, Uzaki from Uzaki-chan. Midori from Yofukashi no Uta. Jahi from Jahi-sama. Plenty of decently prominent roles, it seems. Yeah. Plenty, plenty. And lastly, but not leastly, we have Masako Nozawa voicing Ekikakarin. 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 Right. She's the voice of motherfucking Son Goku. <laughs> okay. Talk about the surprise. Son Goku, Son Gohan, and Son Goten. The, the entire fucking family. <laughs> and Bardock, and Turtles, and Black Goku, and absolutely everybody. God damn, talk about the surprise. Huh. And uh, Gilmon in Digimon, apparently, as well. That's like, whatever. She, she voices motherfucking Goku. <laughs> That's what matters, doesn't it? And has been voicing him for like 
a while. Oh, she voiced uh, th this motherfucker from um, from Maya. Wait, is Maya a Japanese production? What? I guess it's a Japanese production. I I don't know. For some reason, I always thought it's a Polish <laughs> Polish cartoon. But yeah, apparently, motherfucking Chuka Maya is 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 an anime. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing, man. This video is just a roller coaster. It's just a, it's just a roller coaster. The person who originally voiced motherfucking Maya the Bee also voices Son Goku. Uh, <laughs> no, she she's not voicing Maya. She's voicing the this dude, her like Maya's, I don't know, friend, boyfriend, whatever. Okay. All right. Well, I've got nothing more to say, really. Oh boy. I got so much more than I than what I bargained for. Honestly, I I, I could say the same about uh, what's the name of this show? Sorry, I have I still haven't learned. Uh, all of the titles of all of the shows I'm watching right now by heart. Uh, it's uh, uploads channel. Uh, where is it? Where is it? There we go. Sentai Daishkaku. Sentai Daishkaku, another show this season that was a huge surprise through just sheer production quality because it was by Studio Yostar. And here we also have a show by a, I don't want to say unnamed studio. But a studio that I did not expect this sort of a output out of making an absolute banger with a story that completely completely surprised me and I'm still up for many surprises because the mother fucking Ren did not give away the book, so there's probably gonna be some tomb fuckery going around that book. And there's a character voiced by the voice actress of Son Goku. Uh, it was good. This episode was good. I had so much fun with it. I had such a good time with it. I liked the characters. I liked the themes. It, it tried to... Uh, contain within this episode. Those are themes that are very close and dear to my heart it's a surprise it's a surprise i thought that sentai daishkaku is going to be the like sleeper hit of this season but i think it might be this one i don't want to say that it's going to be the sleeper hit instead of sentai daishkaku uh, but it might be another sleeper hit yeah, maybe, probably. Shit's good, yo. It's very, very good. And uh, I'll be watching. I'll be watching. Another... It's crazy to me how... I... wasn't sure about this show. Initially, when I was picking and choosing the shows to watch, I really thought it's going to be just uh urban legend of the week and uh oh yeah the like staircase is actually one step longer if you go upwards than if you go downwards or yeah if you hide your shoes in this locker at school they actually get filled with rice for some reason wow and there's a ghost that does it and we meet the ghost and we talk to that ghost and we uh, Amun Barata Bitsu and we just I don't know, remove it or whatever and and that's it, and that's gonna be the show and there's gonna be Echi and boobs swinging left and right and her losing clothes in every other episode because the ghost dissolved it I fully expected something like that and who boy was I mistaken 
very positively mistaken, very good mistaken. I want to be mistaken like that more. This is the kind of mistaken that I, that like good. I don't want to be right if this means to be mistaken. <laughs> very good episode. Very good show. It's shaping up to be, and uh, I'll be I'll be awaiting it with bated breath. Every single new episode. Good, good shit. Watch it, please. It's good. Shit's good, yo. Uh, yeah, I guess right now all that's left is to just end this episode here. Uh, but you guys, you tell me what did you think of this episode of my reaction, my theories, stuff like that in the comments down below. Uh, no spoilers though from the manga. If you read this source material, please don't spoil it to me. Uh, if you do want to talk spoilers, there's my Discord here and you can use like spoiler tags there and talk spoilers to your heart's content. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe to be notified of future videos, not only uh, this one, uh, not only Mysterious Disappearances, but also Yukio Naisa Hero, Sentai Daishkaku, Blue Archive, the animation uh spice and wolf unnamed memory and others coming in the future click the bell to be notified of when i go live because i do stream sometimes support the channel if you want monetarily on patreon down below where for 10 bucks a month you get early access to non-seasonal shows like yuki yuna and for just a dollar you get a role on the discord and a place in the credits you can also support me directly via youtube via membership super thanks super chats and if you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, you don't have to. Share my content, spread the word, it costs absolutely nothing and helps the channel a lot. And now, with all of that out of the way, that's gonna be it from me for today. So as always, you guys do all the good stuff, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers! And here's my wonderful Patreons, QB, Without a Net, of Survivor, Zarian, Ayuki, Ala, Ishtamu, Dr. Watt, Akamas, Marsh, Fassel, and Hans, Peter. And you can join them as well without having your body compressed into the form of a child. <laughs>